has lots of cash. Has lots of cash. And yet they treat. And yet they treat. Workers like trash. Workers like trash. The university puts a lot of money and a lot of time into building up this facade of an educational institution that's like really focused on their students. The people I was closest to on campus is definitely not the administration. There are some faculty members I'm very close to, but mostly it was like people who are at the doors around campus you see every day. We are in the middle of a contract negotiation which have lasted for 10 months. Columbia University brags about being a $5 billion corporation and they refuse to meet our needs. My name's Jane Brennan. I'm a third year anthropology student. I am one of the lead organizers for Student Worker Solidarity. My name is Osmond Cousins. I have been working with the faculty house Columbia University for um, 18 years. We do catering. I'm a part of the kitchen, a chef. We cook all the meals for faculty and staff. It's basically a customer service environment. It's a very expensive university. I think that any student who attends here, no matter whether it's fully on financial aid or is not on financial aid, is in a position of extreme privilege. Our university talks a lot about community, but there's different aspects of our community that they always manage to leave out. Five months out of the year, we are laid off, and um, they expect us to feed us our families on $65 a week. The client is really appreciative of our service and wants to tip you, but no, if they sell a wedding or a bar mitzvah or a corporate occasion, they sell it with the understanding that the 22% of that surcharge is tips for the workers. Colombia has been taking that since 2008. People were shocked when they found out about stuff that was happening. We have two people died, um, God rest their souls, who had worked for almost 15 years without a raise. So our contract expires in March, April. Then we will be out of health insurance. Our back is against the wall. We're basically desperate. They managed to kind of keep like faculty houses off campus. It's a place that only faculty bring certain students to. We decided to um, wear these pins. And as a result, we attract the attention of the students. When we just started meeting with the workers around early December, we started going in there about every day. We met off the record. We had to um, meet them on different places, secretively. We dealt with um, what was legal and what was not legal. And we came to the conclusion that there were certain things that the students could do that we couldn't. These people are our friends and community members. These people are our friends and community members. And they deserve to be treated as such. And they deserve to be treated as such. That's right. They have been screwed over. They have been screwed over. By every contract in the last 10 plus years. By every contract in the last 10 plus years. This is the year. This is the year. They are not screwed over. Especially the students who have a lot more autonomy on campus and have a lot less to lose could organize like in a more radical way to support what was going on in negotiations. The way they can rally and, and, and be boisterous and make lo noise and yell, we definitely couldn't do that on our own. But we don't work for the university, we pay to come here. They pay up to $60,000 a year to be here. That means we, they cannot turn them away as they would turn us away. I'm a student, I'm able to do certain things on campus. Kind of acknowledge your privilege first. The conversation would be basically, what can they do for us? This is an issue we really care about and we plan to make sure that the university is held accountable. Solidarity means, unfortunately, that we have to collaborate with paying students. We have to lean on students to get a decent salary. It's embarrassing. I wouldn't feel justified if my daughter came here paying $60,000 and I have to get, get involved in a brawl like this for minimum wage workers. Sometimes we talk about ourselves as a support group, as just like a place where we can pressure the university or pressure the negotiating team. They rallied at the windows of a Scott Wright, an administrator. The security guard stood by and um, couldn't do nothing because it was a mingling of workers and students. We wouldn't have had the opportunity to get a permit for a bullhorn because of them. We got a bullhorn so we could speak louder to the community. Hi.
Hi, my name is Jocasta Martinez. I have been working in faculty house for three years. My name is Jack. I work for Columbia University from 2009, and the only thing I get from them is thank you, nothing else. Oh, I'm sure I'm sure. The most important thing is communication. You know, there was an article released, the stuff that had been happening at Faculty House, and the administration had picked up the papers earlier that morning, so they weren't at Faculty House. We had two publications in The, the Spectator on the front page, and those opportunities, we would never have had them if we were to fight on our own. The university's goal is to make money, and that's something that's always going to be harmful to both students and workers, but the goal is to be able to push back on the university as really is like an institution of learning. I would love it if the faculty house uh, negotiations were able to wrap up tomorrow with a fair contract, but I also know that the connections that we've made with some of the faculty house workers aren't kind of going to end. There is talk of grad students organizing. There's a lot of grad students who are involved who are TAs. We would have to toe the line legally, know what, how we can help them just as much as how they can help us.